In this tutorial I'm going to go over how to lay a satellite image over the top of the lap terrain that we just imported in the accurate location that it should be in. So to start with, you're going to need UC Wind Road. You're also going to need Google Earth. I use Google Earth Pro because of the export functions. You can export a 4800 by 4800 image instead of just screen res. And you're also going to need Photoshop. So you can see in Google Earth I have my test place here which is what the place mark that I base the WAP terrain on. Um, I've made a new center point which is a little bit closer to the mountain area that I want to put the image down from so I'm gonna hide the test place one. And I've actually already figured out mathematically the top right and bottom left corners of my grid point which this is where this is the satellite image that I need and um, degrees minutes seconds is just a unit of measurement and we've calculated this exactly is four kilometers from the center point to this to this point is four kilometers this way and this way so these are exactly four kilometers away from each other from the center point so I'm gonna end up with an eight kilometer by eight kilometer square here so to start with we need to export this out of Google Earth and into and bring it into Photoshop so we can clip it so in order to do that, I've zeroed out my altitude on this. So if you go to properties on the point and you go to altitude, it's on the ground, and view, the heading is zero, 00 and the tilt is zero, 00, so you're exactly above it. So I double click on it and it zooms in. And I want to stop it right about there. So my bottom left corner and my top right are just visible to the extents of this box. You can also tell that my my uh, screen over here is dragged all the way over to the center instead of being all the way over here. And that's because with Google Earth Pro, you can see when I hit Control alt s you can see that premium, in order to make this 4800 by 4800 square, you actually have to manually drag this a little bit in order to find out where the exact center is. So I'm pretty close now one more pixel over there we go so now 4800 by 4800 that's what I want I'm gonna save this to my desktop I'm gonna call this 8 kilometer marker hit save and Google Earth is doing its thing and because it's 4800 by 4800 you can see in that it's actually zooming out or zooming in as it's making these images this could take a little while it usually doesn't delay like this I don't know what the deal is with this there we go Okay, and then once that is exported, then we don't hit anything, and then just hide all the place marks. And then do the exact same thing. Export it again. Same thing, the biggest size. Save it. And we'll call this one 8 kilometer cutter. Save it. Now that that is saved out, we have our two images. We're going to go over to Photoshop and open both of my images up. Okay, looks like we got an error on the marker, but it doesn't matter because the, the cutter is really the image that we need. The marker is just giving us our points in the correct spots. So, so you can see that there's a little discrepancy here in, in the Google Earth image, which can quickly do a little bit of adjusting. Just 
to get it to match a little bit better to the other part. Deselect that, and that looks better. And now we will turn the cutter, the marker one, back on. We'll copy this one, so Control A to select it all, Control C to copy, go to the cutter one, Control V, paste it on top. You can see that it's my, now it's a new layer inside of this image. So we're going to actually have the background layer selected, but we're going to draw, we're going to have the this one on just so we can see these two pinpoints. Basically, all you're going to do is grab, make a marquee from roughly the bottom of this pin all the way over to the other pin and now that we have that marquee made we can hide that layer zoom out again and now that is our 8 kilometer by 8 kilometer area so now if I copy this area so if I control C this again just copy to make sure and I go to new and I paste this in there so now there's the image that I want now I'm going to make this I'm gonna scale this image the image size of it because obviously now it's no longer a perfect square and I want this to be exactly divisible by four so I'm gonna split this image into four when I bring it into UC Windows so it's a, a four part grid so I'm gonna just make I'm gonna make it 4096 by 4096 take off constraint proportions so that way it divides perfectly. So you're not going to lose anything by doing that. And now I'm going to save. This is our image that we're going to bring directly into UC WinRoad. So now I'm going to save this as a bitmap because in order to use the the image cutter inside of UC WinRoad, it has to be a bitmap. So we're going to call this eight kilometer. That image. Save. Okay, now that now that that's saved, we can go back to UC WinRoad. So now I go back to UC WinRoad, and under Tools, there's a Dice Street Map option. So we're gonna go to that. We go to the the my bitmap. Apparently, I didn't save it yet. Okay, that's why I didn't go through the options yet. I had to click OK to save it. Now, when I go back to UC WinRoad, there's the bitmap. So now, I'm going to click on the bitmap, and this is a street map dicer. And this is exactly what I, it's. It already figured out what I want. It defaults to two by two. You can make this whatever, how many ever um, columns and rows you want. Sometimes you want it to be more detailed, but this. I'm going to make it 2x2 two two for right now, and I'm going to use JPEG images because they're compressed. So I hit JPEG, and now just dice that image into four individual images. And now here comes the fun part of lining up where those four images are supposed to go. So I'm going to need to have open, I'm going to open Google Earth and UC WinRoad side by side for this so it's a little easier to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to turn on my two corners here. And shut this off. Okay, so now basically I need the lat long coordinates for this bottom left point because in UC WinRoad side the street map tool you need to use the bottom left corner in order to, to, to make the grid that you're going to use. So I'm going to go back to UC WinRoad and I'm going to go to properties of my bottom left coordinate just so I can see what the coordinates are for that specific point. So I'm actually going to drag this a little bit over and widen UC WinRoad a little bit so I can have some of my tools back. Okay, so now inside of UC WinRoad, we're going to have to find that point. So if I go to the plan view, do the same thing. 
You can see down here in the bottom left corner of the plan view, as I move the mouse around, you can see that I actually have my degrees, minutes, seconds here for the for south and east that are correct based on the lap terrain. The other number here is the meters in of UC Wind Road. So the Basically, when the lap terrain is made, it's projected onto a flat terrain. It's made from a spherical terrain, and it's projected onto a flat terrain. So these meters don't actually correspond to real-world coordinates in UTM, but the lat longitude does. So we need to basically use our mouse. We're going to zoom in here. This is about the area that my center point, my bottom left coordinate somewhere in this mountain right here. So I'm going to zoom in here and find this coordinate exactly. So... I have 274533 a little high 274533 is about there and 152-5149 actually it should be 34 because I'm going to round up So this part's a little tricky because it's a lot of it's basically mouse hovering in order to find where you need to go. Okay, there it is right there. So don't move your mouse after you have that position. Now I'm gonna just leave my mouse as is and I'm gonna write down these two meter coordinates so I know exactly where the it, what where I need to place my the start point for my sat grid. So it's six nine Two nine four three nine point seven by four eight six five six five point four. Okay, so and now I'm going to, now that I have that written down, I'm going to go, I don't need Google Earth anymore, so I'm going to maximize UC Wind Road, I'm going to click OK here, I'm going to maximize UC Wind Road, and go to the satellite image placement tool, which is this one right here, the street map, and now in this tool, you have to go to find satellite picture, and then click on this little grid button to scan for it. And as soon as you do that, it brings up this picture grid. And now I already know that my grid is each square. It's 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 two by two, so each square will be four thousand meters by four thousand meters. And each and the width will be two cells by two cells. And so my I'm going to go to X Y instead of local and then put in those two numbers that I just got. So 692-9439.7 and the Y coordinate is 486-565.4 and then I'll click OK. You can see that the four coordinates ended up right there and now I will click on one of these, and because I diced the street map, it's already going to be where I need it to be. So that's the four that see right here, and made it what I named it, eight kilometer sat image. Row one is the top left one. Row one, column one. And they just go in order. Row one, column two. Row two, column one. And row two, column two. And in here, they're just whatever you named the image and then the r underscore the, r the rows and columns for how many ever you made. And that's what the Dice Street Mapper does. So now that I have that in there, I just click OK. Now when I zoom out, you can see that my satellite image has lined up with my mountains. And now the mountains look a lot more realistic than they did before because the dips and valleys are in the correct spot and this is exactly what I had wanted and that is how you 
line up a sat image with the WAP terrain.